Today we're going to look at lesson 19, which is talking about evaluating, which means solving, and writing expressions. So remember, what is the difference between an expression and an equation? An expression has the operations like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, but it also is just the numbers with those symbols and no equal sign. Otherwise, it would be an equation. So really, it's just an answer and equal sign that separates the difference between an expression and an equation. A couple things that we need to make sure we're clear on from previous years in school, in math class, you would have learned that these parentheses mean we do them first. So if we have parentheses around any group of numbers, that group of numbers need to be solved first. So in this case, like it's saying, we would do 5 plus 8 because it's inside the parentheses. Then you can multiply by 2. And then the other thing is, like we've talked about fractions as division, this bar, bar means to divide. So you would have to solve what's on top first and then what's on bottom so that you could divide. So like it says here, the fraction bar groups the numerator separately from the denominator. So first you'd have to evaluate. Remember that also means to solve the numerator and the denominator, then you could divide, okay? So we're gonna be looking at different things that force you to solve in different ways. So when we look at these, adding parentheses into an expression can change its value. So if we wouldn't have added these first, this would have been a two times five plus eight, and you would have had a 10 and then added 18. Whereas this one would have been five plus eight, which is what? 13 and then times two. And 13 times two equals 26. So 10 plus eight, when we finish this one here, 18. So an 18 versus 26, if we didn't have those parentheses in this particular spot, they would completely change our answer. So the parentheses force us to do the addition first. We're going to solve both expressions by dropping down answers. This is important for your algebra teachers in middle school and even high school. This is going to help them see that you know what expressions or what operations need to be done first. Be careful. If you don't do this one step at a time, then you might miss an operation or miss a number, and then you won't have your correct final answer. So anything that hasn't been cal calculated, like this 8, I just dropped it down. The adding, I didn't add anything yet. I just dropped it down. Same thing with this 2. Just dropped it down, multiplying, dropped it down. So I know I still need to solve those. So you can't just look at an expression and solve it. You're showing each step. You're showing the order of operations. Then circling your final answer is helpful. So I could have technically dropped down my answer of 18 here. You really should only have two sides to an equal sign. You should never have more than one equal sign in a row unless it is showing that all the different sides of the equal sign is true. So dropping them down kind of shows that, okay, I've done everything. I have, I've multiplied, I added, I have everything. I have nothing left to drop down. It's helpful to do it this way so that way you know you've solved every part of the expression. Okay, so doing those things, let's look at two different expressions. I see some similarities, but I also see some differences. So I see a two times three plus five. I see a two, I see times, and then in parentheses this time is three plus five. So you know how to solve these, you know how to add, you know how to multiply. Yes, if you miss that answer, it's gonna change your entire thing and be wrong. So we need to make sure we're practicing our precision with that. But we can go ahead and start solving these together. So I kind of want to see, take it on your paper right now, write the two times three plus five. And 
show each let's see if you show each step one one at a time and then get the final answer i do so i'm going to have you pause and see what you get all right so if you did a two times three plus five we would need to first do the two times three so two times three i like to use this arrow to kind of show which ones i did first and that would be a six be careful don't add on accident a lot of people always do five for that i'm bringing down what i didn't use yet and so then now i'm down to one operation i can do six plus five and my final answer is 11 circling it look i have nothing left i got it all right now what about this one with those parentheses so I can't do the two times yet. So I am going to do the parentheses first. So three plus five is eight. I'm bringing down what I didn't solve yet. And that's the times two. And then I get a 16. So kind of like our example above, if we have parentheses, that is going to change our value, right? So if there are, you see these parentheses, make sure you're solving that first. Let's try this example. This one's a little bit more interesting when it's showing kind of that fraction bar situation versus not. So you can kind of see here we have that three plus eight and then nine minus two. There's a division sign, right? If we have this fraction bar here, we, are, we can't divide. We have to add these first, subtract that second, then we can divide. But when we are looking at it in a straight row like this, we have to follow the order of operations. The order of operations is solving parentheses first, like we just talked about. If you have any exponents, which this is a sixth grade focus for you guys, so maybe even make a note that you might not see any of these unless I'm really trying to challenge you. Sixth grade is focusing on exponents. And, but then we have this multiplication, division, adding, and subtracting. So they're stacked together. So, and I have this arrow. What this means is that they're equally important to do before adding and subtracting. So if I have multiplication, division left in an expression, I would have to work left to right. What that means is if I had six divided by two times four, I'll do times uh, one. I would have to work left or right. I wouldn't jump to the multiplication, even though it's written here first, I would just go left to right, solve, and then solve my next one, okay? Same with, thing with adding and subtracting. If I had 10, minus three plus two, I wouldn't jump to the addition. I work left to right, okay? Now, multiplication and division are before adding and subtracting. Any multiplication and division have to be done first before you would add or subtract because what mathematicians found out is that it impacts the answer the most. We know our answer changes much greater when we're manipulating numbers, if we multiply it or divide it. Now, if we add or subtract, it doesn't change our final answer as much. So that's why it's the order of operations. We all mathematicians follow this order so that we can have our same answer. So for this one, we have which operation should be first? We have addition, division, subtraction. You should say division. Different situation here, right? So I'm going to show that I drop down. 18 divided by 9 is what? 2. Now, you might have felt like you're in reading mode. Your eyes are in reading mode where you want to go left or right, and you're like, okay, let's add, and then I'll divide. Division is first. So I'm going to drop down, and it's helpful to stay nice and organized here. Like, I don't squeeze it in too much. I keep it kind of all nice in line here. And now I have what's left. Okay, so I have addition and subtraction. What should I do? How should I start solving this one? Well, okay, parentheses, no. 
exponents? No. Multiplication and division? No. And subtracting? Yes. That's all we have left. So I'm going to work left to right, like we talked about. So I will add first and get a 5. Bring down my subtracting 2. Now, here's the thing. I know you can subtract 2 mentally from 5. But you're showing, the whole point of this is showing the order of operations. So you have to show how that 3 came to be. Okay? And that's my final answer. Now, for this one, quite different. Because it's a fraction, I'm going to kind of show my answers that I'm solving here off to the side. And this is not the only time you can really do two steps at once. Now, if there's more things happening in the numerator than just adding, we might need to take this one step at a time. But 18 plus 3, what is that? 21. So I still have division. I have not done that yet. I just eliminated addition. So you could really just do the subtraction right now too. So 9 minus 2 is 7. So now I have 21 divided by 7. It's like an improper fraction. Well, we've been practicing for quite a while now. So our answer is 21 divided by 7 is, oh, that's a mental math fact, 3. Okay? They both equal the same thing. Even though we did not do division first on this one. Interesting, right? So let's use these order of operations and solve some more problems. Okay? So a lot of times what the instructions will say is evaluate. Again, it means solve the expression showing the order of operations as you solve. Circle your final answers. We shouldn't have any mysterious numbers appearing without showing what operation you solved. So go ahead, write this one down. 12 minus 8 plus 3. Let's see if we solve this in the correct order. Okay, so which order did you start with? Did you notice that it was just subtraction and addition left? And if it is, you work left to right. I'm even going to write that on here. Left to right. And that goes for the multiplication and division too. So you should have subtracted 8 and have gotten a 4. Bringing down the addition sign, did you bring everything down you were supposed to? You didn't just mentally get an answer, which is still okay, but not what we're focusing on here. So then you would just have 4 plus 13 left, and then that answer would be 17. How'd you do? Let's try this one. Go ahead and write it down. 24 divided by 8 times 9. Let's see if you can follow the order of operations for this expression. Okay, which one did you start with? Did you notice that it was division and multiplication? It's all you have. So you're going to work, yep, left to right. If you don't have it somewhere, I would write down the order of operations. Some people even, for a quicker way to remember it, put down P, E, M, D, and then the A, S next to each other. In the past, uh, a lot of parents know this one as PEMDES. <laughs> so if they remember PEMDES, they remember the order of operations. So you should have divided first since we're moving left to right. So 24 divided by 8, 3. Drop down that multiplication. And the 9, 3 times 9, 27. How would you do on that one? All right, well, there's more examples. There's more sticky situations we can get into here with these expressions. So that was pretty basic. Now we're getting into the big ones and using more than just two steps. That's all we've really seen so far. So let's really put our order of operations to the test. What some people like to do, as I was mentioning, they put the order of operations off to the side so they can refer back to them quickly. So looking at example five, let's go ahead and write it down on your paper and let's show the steps. Let's see if we can all do this one correctly too. But again, it's going to be a challenge. It's okay if you don't get it. Write down 47 minus, and then in parentheses, you're going to put 13 plus 2. Finish the parentheses. And then, ooh, nothing's in between, but we have a 2 plus 6 over 4. 
So write it down like it is on my paper here that I'm showing you. And I want to discuss this one first with you. Now, if you want to pause and give it a shot, go for it. But I do think there's some learning points you're going to want to see here. What operation do you think will be first? Well, hopefully you said parentheses, right? That's what you can see first. Always take stake in, okay, note like, what do I have here? I have subtraction, I have parentheses, I have addition, I have addition, I have, ooh, division too. So looking at all those, we know the parentheses is going to go first. I'm going to show these in color, coordinate them so that you can tell what I'm doing in each step. So those parentheses, I'm doing that first. So 13 plus 2 is going to be a 15. Now, I didn't do 2 plus 6 or dividing that by 4. And I didn't do the 47. And I didn't do anything with the subtraction sign. This is that moment I wanted to show you about. Uh, what's happening here? <laughs> what operation is that? So there's something we need to know. That whenever there's a parentheses and a number next to it, it means you multiply. So it's a nice way for us kind of not having to write a multiplication sign. It's kind of like the distributive property. We know we're going to multiply all this by whatever that ended up being. So we are going to put in a multiplication sign right here. Now that we've busted out of those parentheses, we need that sign there. Because this was saying to multiply but now we need it because the parentheses are gone. All right, what would be next? Let's take, again, take stake. What, 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 what do we have? What operations are left? All right, it looks like we have subtraction. We have multiplication that was sneaky in there. And then we have addition and we still have division. Which one would be next? This one's interesting. We technically have a fraction bar we need to get rid of. We have division. We need it. We don't have any more parentheses. We don't have any exponents. So now we're down to the multiplication and division level, right? So I can't multiply first. I can't work left or right because I can't divide. I don't have anything to multiply it by yet. I need to get rid of this. So let's go ahead and add those two. So it's it kind of breaks the rule. We're jumping to addition, but it's because of that fraction bar. That sneaky fraction bar. So six plus two is eight. Now, I know you want to go ahead and think about that four, but we're not ready to yet, okay? So we still need our fraction bar. We still need a four. We still need our multiplication sign. We still need our 15, subtraction, and 47. Whew, I told you this one's more involved. What do we have? We have subtraction, multiplication, and technically division. Which one's going to go first? Well, the interesting thing about this one is you can kind of, you can make this into an improper fraction and multiply straight across, but you're still going to have an improper fraction. You really need to bust out the fraction bar first. So remember, you do have to finish all the pieces there and then divide. That has to be done. So because of this fraction bar, we are doing eight divided by four which is two. Can't really do an, an arrow there when it's the fraction bar, can I? That means I still have multiplication, I still have 15, I still have subtraction, and I still have 47. Still with me? <laughs> now we're finally down to two operations. We're down to multiplication or down to subtraction. Which one's gonna come first? What you said? Multiplication. I'm running out of colors here. So with our multiplication, we're going to do that. So 15 times 2. You can still do that one mentally. But if you ever get into a tough position with multiplying, do it off to the side. Divide off to the side. Anything you need to do. So I'm, I know 15 times 2 is 30. And I still have not subtracted that 47. And now I can. This is a time where you can put your equal sign off to the side if you'd like. But remember, I'm doing that because I, I kind of ran out of room there. But it helps me know that that's the last thing if I do drop that down. So 47 minus 30. What are we going to get? 
we are going to get a 17. Final answer circled. Whew. Let's backtrack for a second. If there's a parenthesis in a number, what operation is it telling you to do? Sneaky way of telling you to multiply. If there's a fraction bar, you have to solve everything on the top and then divide before you can do any other operation. Okay. And then we're kind of back to what our normal one was. All right. So that one had all our weirdness. I think you're ready for example six. Go ahead and pause and try it. Okay, so 32 divided by 4 minus 2 times 3. Goodness, what operation is going to come first? So you hopefully saw division is coming first. Now, we do have division and multiplication, but if we're going left to right, that's only if those are the only two left in here. We wouldn't jump to multiplication. We would start with that division first because it is on the left. So because of that division, 32 divided by 4 is, mental math here, 8. Now, that means you still have not subtracted, you still haven't done anything with the 2, and you still haven't multiplied by the 3, right? Those just came down. You don't have to do the arrows. I always like to do them for what I solved. All right, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. So if you didn't have that, fix it, and let's see if we can get the rest of it correctly. What's next? multiplication yeah makes you jump all the way over here you're gonna solve and two times three is six and we still haven't subtracted we still haven't done anything with eight now we're done to our last one and that would be the subtraction eight minus two i have room this time is or eight minus six is two final answer okay now I'm really going to test you here. With example 7 and example 8, I'm throwing in some decimals and fractions. And something else for example 8 here, maybe you remember. So example 7, we need to do 8.7 or 8 and 7 tenths plus 3 and 3 tenths. Now we know for adding decimals, we need to line them up. So I want to visualize this off to the side with you that this would end up being, drops it down, right? 12, 12 holes. Awesome. So what operation did I just do? I added, but why did I add first? Hopefully you realized I had the parentheses that I needed to do first. So it was 12. Wait, wait a second. So what's this one? Is it the answer 12 and one fourth? No, remember if there is a number next to the parentheses, it's a sneaky way of telling you it's multiplication. Oh, lovely multiplication problem here. We have 12 times one fourth. What does that equal? Well, we can just put a one underneath it, right? And we get 12 over four division problem now. And that is going to be a total of Three. 12 divided by 4 is 3. See what I was talking about? Putting your work off to the side. Okay, so we practice that again. I've seen that multiplication through in a little decimal review too. Go ahead and press pause and try this one. Write down parentheses 3 plus 5 and parentheses and then a 4 and 5 tenths. Let's see if you get this one. So you have parentheses. You have to do those first. Did you get that? So that you're going to have 5 plus 3 is an 8. Dropping down that 4 and 5 tenths. Again, sneaky. Sneaky multiplication happening here, right? Because of that parentheses and number being next to it. Oh, we're reviewing decimals and multiplication. Do you remember the first step to multiplying decimals? You ignore them. Yay! the first thing you get to actually do in math um the first time you get to ignore something right so i am not lining them up by their place value like we do with addition but with multiplication ignoring it completely i'm pretending this is a 45 so 5 times 8 is 40 and then 8 times 4 is 32 32 plus 4 is 36 do you remember how to get the decimal back in our answer after we've actually multiplied and ignored it 
Do you remember that we estimate there is a trick? It can be used, but not for your explaining. So this can estimate to, what is this about? I'm going to say five. It's closer to a five, right? Halfway, we go up. And it's an eight, so keep it an eight. So your estimate is 40. <laughs> Where's our decimal have to go? It can't, it can't be 360. It can't be three holes, right? So if it's going to be a closer estimate, our decimal has to go there, okay? All right, our answer is done. We got a 36. Now you could still keep the decimal and you could keep the zero, but it's still 36. Excellent. Now, if you are in class, we are taking it a step further and talking about those sixth grade expressions because the only thing that's added to it is exponents, right? If you are not in class, we are not going to spend the video time on this, so that's okay. You can still get a sneak peek when you are back in the classroom. Okay, don't forget, you must follow the order of operations to get your correct answer for expressions. Go ahead and let's practice. 